when real next-gen games come out, you'll be a footnote in a couple of months. Nobody will even talk about this game, ever even mention it when we talk about the greats of this generation. No game of the year, no real champion, just bare minimum. This is not a good game. It is not a 10 out of 10. No way is it anywhere near game of the year. Game of the year winner is Elder Ring. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today, you smell what the Act Man's cooking? It's more terrible gaming hot takes. Oh, you ever take a fat dump on your steak before throwing it on the grill? That's what it smells like. So, let's jump into it, all right? What do we got today? Remember when video games had bare titties because why not? God of War used to be a series worth playing. Now Kratos has feelings. That's, that's kind of that's kind of gay, but hey. Remember when Kratos used to jack off after he beat every boss and you would look at some hot porn? Now he's now this motherfucker has feelings. No, I don't have feelings because feelings are gay. Thanks for coming back with me. You didn't have to. I am your father. I will always help as long as I am able. God, what a pussy. Of course the dude got feelings. That's why he's doing any of the shit he's doing. How do you go from this to this? It's such a downgrade in sex appeal. Game Freak needs to do better when they make the new Pokemon. <laughs> Sometimes I hate the gaming community. It's a fucking child's game, dude. But it's a child's game starring children. There doesn't, there needs to be no sex appeal, except for Cynthia and Professor Oak. I will no longer play the characters of Killjoy and Raze and Valorant due to them being homosexual. <laughs> Thank you for ruining my gaming experience. <laughs> He's just like, why did they have to be gay? Why are you gay? Why did they have to like vagina instead of penis? Remember when we could just talk about video games and, and we talked about why they were bad or why they were good? Can we just go back to that? Please? No. If this was a Netflix show, Kratos' son would be gay <laughs> and Kratos Afro-American. But since it's Amazon, I think the casting will be good, but the plot will be very disappointing. Boy, do I have news for you about who plays Kratos. Fucking got him. Gamers be like, we need to reduce crunch in development and complain when devs do something that reduces their workload. People who complain about crunch are just incels who hate on The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, that's gotta be, that, that's, that's the most obvious troll I've ever seen. Someone sent me this image up. My love for Blizzard games outweighs my dislike of and then the sound of yeah. The other thing is, I don't know anyone personally that was harmed, so I couldn't care any less. I also pre-ordered those games before any of this came to light. I... Where to begin? I don't know who on God's green earth could have written this, but they clearly wrote it to justify whatever purchases or, or time they spend playing Blizzard games. It's like, you don't have to justify it. Just because some bad shit happened doesn't mean you you are morally reprehensible for playing a game. It's up to you if you want to boycott the company or not. I, I respect it either way. But like, you don't have to justify that by, by saying, well, I don't know anyone who was sexually assaulted at Blizzard, so... Fuck them. What? What? Elden Ring's millennia embodies from software's problems with women. Knock, knock. Who's there? Polygon. Polygon who? Poly gonna give you another bad article to read? <laughs> Why do FromSoft games always bring out like the worst opinions in everyone? So it talks about Millennia, Blade of Mikola. This enigmatic warrior captured the audience from the moment she appeared and she featured prominently in the rest of the game's marketing. But instead of becoming an uncontested favorite, she frustrated fans and revealed the limitations of From Software's imagination. This is a critique I have never once heard before. I mean, I've heard people complain that Millennia is a hard fight, maybe too hard for some. Definitely not me. But I've never heard someone describe it as unimaginative. It's such a legendary, iconic boss fight of the game. Like, they made a freaking statue of her. Millennia exemplifies the way FromSoft writes women in its games. Whether bosses or NPCs you meet in the wild, 
These women have a shared condition. They exist in tragically declined worlds, so like every character in From Software games. Sharing a specific brokenness, disfigurement, abandonment, and loss. So like every character in From Software games. They are afflicted by... by gender? Afflicted by gender. And the cure for when they are obstacles instead of mutely helpful is for the player to enact succinct violence. What the fuck is that sentence? What? It, 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 bad, you killed a bad guy. Bad guy could be a dude, could be a, a dude melted together with a dragon. Bad guy could be a giant knight. That giant knight could be a chick, it could be a dude. It's, you killed a bad guy. The broader gaming community usually reacts harshly towards female characters. I think just the dumb parts of the gaming community, or maybe you could change this to say that the broader gaming community usually reacts harshly to poorly written characters. But then again, some people also call female protagonists woke, which is also dumb. But that, that's like two sides of the same stupidity spectrum. It's like, gamers don't like female characters and having a female character is woke. It's like, they're both equally dumb. Which makes the Soulsborne community's embrace of female characters feel positive on the surface when that attraction feels based on that empty emotionless state or reduces them to infantilized waifus, you realize that hostility and that fondness spring from the same deep sexist roots, twins intertwined. Okay, so a, a lot to unpack here. Uh, what I will say is the article is very well written. It has big words. I'm not saying it's good or I agree, but you know, Homie's been reading a thesaurus. But like, how From Software writes women. I mean, Firekeepers, yeah, they're kind of similar, but you can make that point. But they're all like motherly figures to represent the comfort of the hub zones, uh, which are typically an escape or refuge from the harsh environments outside. Oh! What the fuck? What the fuck? What? So yeah, it helps to have someone like, like, mother you and cradle you. Like, I'm not sure what the point is or why Millennia Blade of Mikola is used as an example. This article comes across like a, a kid fresh out of college who's trying to prove themselves with what they think are mind-blowing assertions, but it's really just a bunch of dumb shit. From software's female characters who deviate from this quiet, doll-like appearance are still written with a lack of emotionality, which feels close to masculine stoicism. Okay, so we can't have strong female protagonists because it's too masculine? Is that, is that what you're saying? What? Why am I reading this? Soulsborne games are infamous for challenging their audiences and over the years have attracted a particular kind of player base. Often men. Why are you... What are you even upset about? What are you, what are you butthurt about? I don't get it. Millennia's boss fight is punishingly difficult and the audience's hostility and competitive attitudes about it are often steeped in gendered toxicity. How? Numerous Reddit posts, YouTube videos, and tweets talk about players' failures or successes while littered with sexist slurs. And, and one of these links goes to a search result on Twitter for Millennia comma bitch. What is the... How can you be so good with words yet so dumb? People also fell back into the usual community discourse about which methods of beating her were more valid and which ones made you a pussy. And success over her took on a weird masculinized chest beating at times. Ooh, ooh, I beat millennia, no summons. Ooh, ooh, me have the biggest penis. Women suck. Is that what you think we are? Is that what you think we're doing? When faced with a difficult, defiant woman who has never been beaten, Men cannot help but fantasize about being the one to take her down. Or, or maybe someone just wants to beat the hard boss, cause it's a hard boss. Why is it- why is it men? Women can like these games too, you jack off. Women continue to populate the path as either passive help meets or predictable obstacles, which the fan base is all too happy to step over. I feel like every single complaint this person has or point they're trying to make could be applied to men as well. They either help you or they don't. Speaking of Elden Ring, it recently won Game of the Year. And you know who wasn't too thrilled about that? Hey yo, so the Game Awards- He's back! He's back! Just ended, and Elden Ring took Game of the Year, and- You can see it in his face, he is still so salty about it. I'm gonna say this right now. I don't know how a game that didn't have any memorable characters that anybody could bond with- Maidenless. I am Melania. 
blade of Mikola. The only thing this game had was difficulty, and if you add an easy mode, half the player base would disappear, but okay, whatever, yeah, that's game of the year. Oh my god, dude, he's so butthurt. Why are you so butthurt about it? The further we get down the years, it's just not gonna be what people are expecting. It's not gonna continue that same energy, bro, but hey. You made this prediction like 10 months ago when it came out, and you were wrong as shit, dog. <laughs> you were so wrong. No game of the year, no real champion, just bare minimum. When real next-gen games come out, you'll be a footnote in a couple of months. Nobody will even talk right. about this game. game Ever even year. mention it Winner when we talk about the greats of this generation. Elder Ring. That is a fact when the next generation cycle is said and done. Don't forget it, and remember I said it on this day. I'll take things that aged poorly for 500. Let's see what happens in 2023. How many of these Souls players will still be playing that game? Probably fucking zero, but okay, let's play the game. <laughs> yeah, it was, okay, it was game of the year this year, but what about 2023, huh? Hmm? What about next year? Is it gonna is it gonna be game of the year then? And uh, you know what? Take your victory laps, have your fun. Take your victory laps, baby. We got the W. We got it. Look at that. That's the freshest dub ever. Whatever, Elden Ring game of the year, but we all know what happened, man. It ain't really a game of the year. It, it, it ain't really a game of the year. It was, but you, it ain't really. Nobody's gonna be playing that game. Bro, the game has already lost traction. It's already losing players. Well, at least you stopped telling people to kill themselves. Let's hear more of uh, Mr. TV's reactions to the Game Awards. Now, as far as Game Awards and all that other stuff, I've had a lot of fun trolling a lot of the Elden Ring players. I think for me, it's been a, a very fun experience, I would say. <laughs> Has it? You guys literally sound like, like abuse victims, right? <laughs> it has been pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't fun for a bit, but, but it is now. The biggest thing is just how easily they offend. They kind of make it easy to farm them for views. And I can say that shamelessly because they shamelessly attack other people that don't want to play the trial and error simulator that is their game of the year, which is fantastic. But it kind of leads me into like the game awards kind of was rigged. Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like, we all know the true winner was my reformed orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. It was either going to be Dad of War or Elden Ring because that's just, those are the two most popular games right now. And the thing that held Dad of War back is it just didn't launch as early as Elden Ring to move as many units, to pick up as much press or whatever, and- Wasn't God of War Ragnarok like one of the fastest selling PlayStation games ever made? Y yeah, it, it was. I was pretty much like, yo, this game kind of sucks, I fucking hate it kind of thing. And then I saw the response that I was getting on my initial review. A lot of the people that were attacking were a lot of the socially awkward weirdos. Look at all these socially awkward weirdos that like Elden Ring and attacking me because they don't have social skills. They have no family, no friends, no life. I'm never gonna like the game because I think, frankly, it would not have killed the developers to have respect for new players. Like, it takes two seconds to add a difficulty toggle. It takes two seconds to add a difficulty toggle. You don't have to retool every encounter and just lower the numbers. That's it. Somebody who has an easier life, who doesn't maybe have so much bullshit to deal with, they're, they're not gonna care. They're gonna be, oh gosh, you're giving me a challenge? I live a boring life. Fantastic. My life is so boring. If only fate would come along and fuck me in the ass. With the Elden Ring gamers that like try to troll or whatever from time to time. And, and for me, I am an adult and I do have responsibilities outside of YouTube and outside of video games and all this other stuff. So people, when they hear that, they just sometimes when they don't have those things, it's a disconnect for them. They're like, what do you mean you're busy with other stuff? He's still basically reiterating the, if you like this game, you probably have no family, no friends, no life. He's he's still saying the same shit, dude. So I think that's the first problem. The second problem with Elden Ring, I think is the graphics. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. The graphics are dog shit. The graphics are dog shit. The graphics are dog shit. In the beginning, like, when I first started Elden Ring and I was playing it, and I was like, man, this game kind of sucks, and then once I saw it was a bunch of 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 21-year-olds, 25-year-olds, like, oh, get good, scrub, I was like, okay, I see what this is. This is a bunch of kids living with their parents. This is what they do to challenge themselves outside of taking out the trash. <laughs> Bro, just can't stop. Just can't, just stop throwing shade. Stop it. You guys will see. It'll be very fun for me next year. More TVs, you guys helped us fund Quantum TV by literally just trolling. Oh, I'm sorry, is this video about the Game Awards or how much money you make? Everybody who has been coming on and who have been ratioing, it's like, 
you've really done nothing but like literally just put money in my pocket, bro. Like all day. I can't watch anymore. When uh, GTA 6 was announced, female pro tag, hard pass. Sorry, the woke crowd ruined it by shoving it down our throats for the past few years. Bye. Okay, it's like, yeah, you can make fun of woke stuff. It does get annoying and tiresome, but that fucking millennia article is kind of right sometimes. Like, like, dumbasses just don't like female protagonists for whatever reason. I, I don't get it. Dude, calling, calling everything sexist is just as cringe as calling everything woke. Can we agree on that? Like, can we, can we at least try to have some, like, reasonable common sense? No. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet criticism makes money. There are still a large number of people that are shitting on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and the Nintendo Switch in general. Yeah, I know, believe it or not, pretty crazy that they're milking the hell out of shitting on Nintendo. But hey, content's content. Content's content. Yeah, it's, it's YouTube, man. Something bad? Hey, look, that thing's bad. Here's my video on it. Something's awesome? Hey, that thing's awesome. Here's my video on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we make videos. These experts, these these social media influencers, these YouTubers, uh, they they have no merit. They have no ground. No merit, no ground. Um, I showed the gameplay of Scarlet and Violet. I think it speaks for itself. That's that's my merit. I've, pl I've played Pokemon since Red and Blue, literally since the 90s. There are people who've gone out and played Pokemon Scarlet and Violet after knowing it was a massive glitchy mess, knowingly paid $60 for this game, and then turned around and spent hours on a review just to shit on it. They weren't sent a pre-copy, they weren't sent a copy ahead of time. They people that get pre-copies don't shit on games like that. What? So you're upset that people are making bad reviews of a game, like, a month or two after it came out. Well, genius. Not everybody shits out a video in one day, okay? Sometimes it takes time. Maybe I don't want to play the game right away. Maybe a buddy convinces me. They weren't sent a pre-copy. They weren't sent a copy ahead of time. They didn't buy the game, play it day one, and make a review, and it was out within the first week. What does the timing have to do with anything? Of course people are going to be negative. It's like it's the internet. These are individuals who will literally go out, buy the game, just to make content on it because it's trendy. Why is it trendy? Is it because the game looks like this? Cause, cause that might be a good reason. When they, when they do these videos on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and Nintendo uh, and the Nintendo Switch and just shit all over it. So, oh, it's so underpowered, it's so garbage, it's so junk. It, it makes me think to myself, well now, you know, this isn't a day one thing. So why are you doing this? Remember fellas, you can only criticize a game if you played it day one and reviewed it in one day. Bro, it's like I bought the game, I didn't play it for a bit and then I played it and then I was like, oh, this is really bad. So I made a video on it. It ain't that deep. What do you gain by spending $60 on a game a month later after the game is released? What do you gain? Views, you gain content. Why would you make a video, a review? Why would you give a company $60 of your hard earned money? Why would you spend $250 to $300 on a game console when you know, one, it's extremely underpowered? Why would I spend money on a game console? Because it's because I bought it five years ago. You've had plenty of time in advance to know about the exact product you're purchasing. You still do it all. You do all of it. And then turn around and spend hours on a review just to shit all over it. Why did I, why did I spend money on a game to review it? Because I'm not gonna steal it. Well, folks, it's been an interesting year, hasn't it? We've seen a lot of great video games and a lot of bad hot takes. That's about all I can handle right now. I'm gonna go get some bleach and pour it into my eyes now. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man signing out. Peace.